Thank you for joining us on Synthesis Workshop. Today is a research spotlight episode, which has been made possible through a partnership with Team of Chemistry, aimed at highlighting some of the great work done by Team of Chemistry journal awardees. Today we're joined by Dr. Ana Garcia Herraiz, who will present on a research area she investigated in the group of Professor Marco Suero, who received the Team of Chemistry journal award in 2019. Ana got her bachelor's degree in chemistry from the Universidad Complutense de Madrid and her master's degree from the University of Groningen, where she worked in the Feringa and Rofels groups. She subsequently came to ICIQ in Tarragona, Spain, where she completed her PhD in the Suero group. She then carried out postdoctoral work in the Kramer group at EPFL before coming to work as a scientist at Firminish. And from there, I'll hand it over to you, Anna. Thank you very much for joining us today. Hi, Matt. Thank you for the invitation to present the mini review we wrote in synthesis in the group of Marcos Suero back in 2019. There, we cover cyclopropanation reactions enabled by photoredox catalysis via radical carbonoids. Let's get started. The cyclopropane ring, the small cycloalkane, is a very special motif present in pharmaceuticals, perfumes, agrochemicals, and natural products. Not only that, but also due to its innate ring strain and double bond character, it's a very versatile binding block in organic synthesis, involved in ring opening, cycloadditions, and rearrangements. The most common strategy to access cyclopropane is a formal 2 plus 1 cycloaddition of alkenes. There are, let's say, three major reactive species. We have the use of metal carbonoids, metal carbines or free carbines, and sulfur and nitrogen elites. These strategies are widely applied, but they face some limitations, like, for example, the use of stoichiometric metals, highly toxic or explosive precursors, and limited reactivity. In the past few years, a new methodology based on radical species has emerged, in which cyclopropanes are synthesized catalytically under visible light irradiation. These carbon-centered radicals have a halogen atom in alpha position, and they are generated via single electron reduction or oxidation, depending on the source. These radical carbonoids or carbonoid-like radicals then attack the olefin and generate the cyclopropane upon cyclization. We will now see in more detail the different methodologies, but we will only cover a few examples of the scope. You can go to the publications to get a better understanding. The first methodology was developed in our group. We thought that commercially available diodomethane could serve as a radical carbonate precursor. The cyclopropanation reaction takes place in the presence of Huni base, a stoichiometric reductant, and one of the most common photocatalysts, ruthenium BPY in the presence of sodium thiosulfate and water and acetonitrile as solvents. We were happy to see that the reaction proceeds in a circumvergent manner, with both alkene isomers leading to the same diastereoisomer of cyclopropane product. Concerning the scope, for instance, aldehydes, tertiary amines, sulfides are well tolerated, which are typically not compatible by other classic methodologies. We observe as well excellent site selectivity in styrenes functionalized with an unactivated alkene, and again, stereoconvergency for an E set mixture of trisubstituted olefins. And there are, of course, some limitations like the terminal styrenes. In the proposed mechanism, visible light irradiation generates the long life for the state of the ruthenium catalyst, which is reduced by diisopropyl ethylamine. The strong reductant ruthenium-1 species donates an electron to diodomethane to form a transient radical anion that subsequently fragmentates into the radical carbonoid. Addition to the EZ alkene mixtures leads to two intermediates, which might be in equilibrium through a CC bond rotation. The ring closing event occurs on the intermediate with the substituents in an antiposition to yield the more stable transcyclopropane. I would like to highlight that there is a background reaction, so in the absence of the catalyst, the product can be formed in a yield of 18%. Our group later proved the amphiphilic nature of the radical carbonoid in the reaction with Michael acceptors, including chalcons bearing electron rich and electron poor aromatic rings, heterocycles, as well as alpha beta saturated aldehydes and ketones. The transformation is again stereoconvergent when using isomeric E-set mixture of chalcons. And we can obtain highly substituted motif with 1,1-diodoethane as source of the iodoethyl radical carbonoid. One limitation is the use of alpha-beta-saturated esters. 
We will now move to a different approach, yet generating the same reactive intermediate. In 2018, the group of Molander, in collaboration with the group of Gutierrez, reported an extensive redox-neutral photocatalytic cyclopropanation via radical polar crossover. They designed and synthesized this benchtop stable triethyl ammonium iodomethyl silicate as a source of iodomethyl radical. It's made from commercial chloromethyl trimetoxicillin in two steps. Using this reagent and an organic photocatalyst, they synthesize a broad range of cyclopropanes, including olefin substituted with a trifluoromethyl or pinacol boryl group, as well as uh, styrins and Michael acceptors. This method shows excellent functional group tolerance. It also generates a single diastereoisomer from an E-set styrene mixture in stereoconvergency. In this case, the stereoconvergency can be rationalized like in the previous example with iodomethane. But the authors also suggest a dynamic kinetic free solution type scenario through a photochemical isomerization of the starting alkene. If we compare it to our methodology, this method shows a broader scope, and since the radical species is the same in both cases, it might come from the different redox environment. The mechanism that Molander and Gutierrez proposed is supported by both experimental and extensive computational data. First, irradiation of the photocatalyst under visible light generates its cited state, which induces a single electron oxidation with a silicate reagent, forming iodomethyl radical. This reductive step is supported by Stelbormer emission quenching experiment. Addition of the generated radical to the alkene leads to a new radical intermediate, which is reduced, regenerating the ground state catalyst, and an anion that furnishes the corresponding cyclopropene via SN2 3 exoted cyclization. If we have a radical clock in an styrene, so a cyclopropene in alpha position, the outcome under Molander's and Schwer's condition is very different. Whereas molander conditions give a bis cyclopropane, ours generate the ring opening product. Computational studies show that in the first case, the ring opening from the benzylic radical is much lower in energy than the radical cyclization in the formation of bicyclopropane. They propose a very fast single electron reduction that exceeds the rate of ring opening prior to ring formation. Shortly after Molander's work, the group of Lee reported an analogous cyclopropanation reaction using an iridium-based photocatalyst and a silicate reagent that acts as a chloromethyl radical source. The scope of this methodology is limited to electron-poor olefins and includes substituted phosphonates with alkyl and phenyl groups, as well as other Michael acceptors. We will move to the next example that was developed by the group of Charit. They employed a diodomethyl pinacol bononate reagent, which they previously used under Simon Smith reaction condition, but now it serves as a sort of BPIN methyl radical. The reaction takes place in the presence of Santon as the photocatalyst under continuous flow condition and UVA light wave radiation. For the scope, the reaction was applied to a broad range of styrenes and tolerate functionalities such as sulfides, halides, cyano and nitro groups, among others. Products were obtained in low diastereoselectivity, and the yields can be improved with more sterically demanding boronates. In this study, the authors could not determine the stereoconvergency of the reaction coming from the substituents of the styrene because the cis styrenes give a very low yield. Regarding the mechanism, they proposed two possible pathways for the borocyclopropanation. Initially, upon UV light irradiation, the corresponding santon excited state can undergo both an oxidative or a reductive quenching. In the top part, the diodomethyl pinacol boronate reagent is reduced to a transient radical anion which evolves into the iodomethyl pinacol ester radical upon fragmentation. Then the amine is oxidized, closing the catalytic cycle. In the reductive quenching scenario, first, the isopropylamine is oxidized, generating santon radical anion that's responsible for the generation of the radical carbonoid. 
as usual, then the radical attacks the corresponding styrins and forms pentilic radical that evolves into the borocyclopropene by a radical 3 exoted cyclization. Based on fluorescent quenching studies, the authors state that the reductive quenching pathway might be more favored. Also, there is a significant excess of the base in comparison to the boronate reagent. In the optimization table, they show that the reaction can also proceed without Santon catalyst in low efficiency. So a competitive energy transfer pathway could as well take place. The last paper covered in the review it's a radical cyclopropanation reported by Lian co-workers and it's in sharp contrast to the previous method. It requires the use of ethyl diazoacetate as the radical source in the presence of catalytic amounts of molecular iodine. This work shows a wide range of styrene as starting materials and products were obtained in good to excellent yields and in low diesterosectivity using ruthenium BPY as the photocatalyst. In the mechanism, the authors propose that gem diodo species is generated in situ from ethyl diazoacetate in the presence of molecular iodine. Then, the excited ruthenium complex is oxidized, generating the radical carbonoid. This species attacks the corresponding styrene, providing the cyclopropane and iodine radical by again an exoted cyclization. After this, the iodine radical reacts with iodide to form an ionic radical that closes the catalytic cycle, regenerating both ruthenium catalyst and molecular iodine. Interestingly, the scope of the reaction was improved under thermal activation in the absence of a photocatalyst and light by heating the ethyl diazoacetate at 100 degrees in the presence of iodine. The scope proved to be much broader. The following paper was not covered in the review because it appeared afterwards. In 2019, our group developed the synthesis of highly substituted cyclopropanes using gem diodomethyl carbonyl reagents. These reagents are synthesized in one step from monoester malonate and end succinamide. The new reagent with the adamantyl group is a bench stable solid and can be synthesized in a multigram scale. An important aspect of this transformation is that the reaction takes place in the absence of a photocatalyst in good yields. We only need diazopropyl ethyl amine and visible light source. The reaction shows a very broad functional group tolerance and excellent chemical selectivity, and it can be carried out at a gram scale. The scope includes highly substituted styrene, heteroaromatics, and even a free sugar can be placed in the substrate for the later stage functionalization of biomolecule derivatives. Regarding the generation of the radical, we envision two hypotheses. The gem diodo reagent absorbs light in the visible region, so we can have an amolytic cleavage of the carbon iodine bond upon irradiation. The second scenario involves the formation of a short lived exciplet between the diodo reagent and the IPA that undergoes photo induced electron transfer. And this brings us to the end of this episode. As a summary, we have highlighted the impact of photoredox catalysis in the discovery of new methodologies for the construction of cyclopropane rings. In general, the methodologies show excellent functional group tolerance and the my reaction conditions and they are also stereoconvergent for the substituents on the starting material. The cyclopropanation reagents are either commercially available or very easy to access. And in general, they don't share the intrinsic drawbacks of other classic methylene sources that are moisture sensitive, explosive or toxic, such as halomethyl organometallics or diazomethane. I would say that the challenges ahead are the cyclopropanation of non-activated olefins as well as in anti-selective methods. With this, I would like to thank my PhD supervisor at ICIQ, Professor Marcos Suero, my former colleague Ana Deloyo, with whom I work on the cyclopropanation reaction. You can contact me on LinkedIn for any question. Thank you, Matt and Theme Chemistry, and all of you for listening this episode. Thank you for tuning in for this Research Spotlight episode, and thank you to Anna for a very interesting talk. Thank you as well to Team of Chemistry for making this episode possible. If you enjoyed the episode, you can support us by subscribing and telling your peers about this podcast, and feel free to send us any questions or comments you have. Follow us on Twitter to stay up to date, and see you all next time.